Hey guys, today's video is going to be about mounts and artifacts and I'm going to go through each one that has been released so far. I'm going to talk about which ones are good uh, and when to use each mount and artifact in different scenarios. So let's start from the most recent one, which is Blue Ox. Blue Ox is absolutely amazing for PvP and is probably going to be one of the best mounts that you can get for warriors and we know now that after level 120 when we can awaken the final class for evolution warriors are going to be the strongest class in the game especially in pvp so with this blue ox you have an increase of 10 percent damage resistance so you can tank even more damage and you can shorten the duration of crowd control effects by 30%. So that means uh, when you get hit by a disarm or a dazzle, they are 30% less effective. So you get to attack earlier than the opponent if they did not have the blue ox. So as a warrior, this is probably one of the only mounts that you should be going for if you wanted to really be competitive in PvP in the future. So if you had blue ox and you have a 10% increase in damage resistance and you pair that with the deer uh, here, the angel deer, which has a 15% increase in damage resistance, you have 25% increase in damage resistance just from those two alone. And that's going to be insanely strong in PvP. Next, we can talk about the Horizon Racer. That was from the Easter event. Uh, every 10 seconds, summon the car, dealing 800% current basic attack, AoE damage, and knocking back targets. So pretty much every 10 seconds, you can knock the enemies back a little bit. I would say that this is, this is an okay mount. I would not say it's the best, but it has its purposes. So you can use this in PvE when you're kind of struggling to kill all the monsters fast enough and then you just need a little bit of extra knockback so you can kind of confuse them for a little bit, stop attacking you and then you can just do that last bit of damage to kill them. That can work quite well. Also in PvE bosses, sometimes with my current skill setup, uh, this is not what I'm using against bosses this is what I use so I have the disarm and the dazzle and then after those wear off I use my blitz assault and then I have to wait until disarm comes off cooldown again so sometimes having this horizon racer it knocks the boss back and it just gives me enough time for my stun to come up again and then I don't have to take so much damage so this is also quite a decent mount, but I would say there are better mounts that you can use. In PvP, this is also yeah decent, it works as it can knock them back, but every 10 seconds you get a knockback. At the start you don't get any knockback, and 10 seconds is quite a long time in PvP, and I feel like it's just not worth uh, this extra mount skill having to wait 10 seconds a lot of the time the fight finishes in 10 seconds so i would probably not suggest using this uh, but use something else if you have it pyro breaker is by far the best mount for archers it allows you to do so much extra damage it increases our base crit rate by one percent and crit damage by five percent every second up to an extra 20 percent crit rate and an extra 100% crit damage. So we end up doing a lot more crits and we end up doing more damage. And that's really helpful when you just want to be a little bit stronger. You can use this in PvE and PvP and it's gonna work really well. For mages and for warriors, not so great, but if you were to get it, you would probably get it for this mount effect which is ignore evasion which comes to a really important point 
all these mount effects that are written here, they are always on. It's a permanent effect. So power damage plus 10% from the ox. I have this permanently on even if I end up using another mount. So it doesn't matter if I, let's say I want to look cool with a Horizon Racer so I've got the car on. I, I still have this power damage effect. And so global basic attack damage, ignore evasion, and global HP. These are always permanently on. So then there comes to my second point where it says extra mount skills. If you can see, I can choose this car uh, as my aesthetic skin. So I, let's say I really like the look of this car. I want to use this, but I don't want to use this skill, right? So I can, let's say I want to use the Pyrobrick skill instead. All I have to do is press this use button uh, next to this extra amount skill. And I now am using this uh, Pyrobrick amount skill, but I am still riding on this Horizon Racer car. So I'm not using this mount skill anymore. This is actually really important because, you know, a lot of the time you kind of equip the mount for its aesthetics, you know, uh, for example, the tiger. I, I like the look of the tiger, it looks pretty cool. But then I, I don't really want to use the effect of the white tiger right now. Let's say I'm in PvP or something, I want to increase my damage resistance instead. So I equip the blue ox extra mount skill. And that's how it works. So finally with the white tiger, also quite a good mount for warriors. Targets with HP percentage below the caster take 15% increased damage, while those with HP percentage above the caster have their attack reduced by 10%. So as a warrior, you want to try and take as many basic attacks as you can, so you have more of a chance to counter the basic attacks. So any form of possibility in trying to reduce the attack damage is absolutely essential. So we're always going to be slightly lower HP and therefore the opponent's attack is going to be reduced by 10%. As a warrior you would always also run easy breezy and it would reduce the attack by another 20%. So at every kind of 15 seconds you would have 5 seconds where their attack is reduced by 30%. That's insanely good because it gives you more chances to proc the counter strike. In PvE, this mount I would say is okay, it's not so great. I would probably just use something else more solid, more consistent. For warriors, it, yeah, it, it could still work, but even then I would probably use something like the blue ox instead of the horizon racer. And let's talk about this blazing motorcycle. I personally didn't go for this one. But for every 10% loss HP, release a flame jet dealing at least 500% of current basic attack damage. And it scales with lost HP. Again, this is another mount for warriors. So, as you can see, we've got quite a few mounts uh, that can work for warriors. But they're not so much for archers or mages. There's a slight preference towards warriors right now, which is okay. So you've got multiple options. If you're a warrior or you plan to go on a warrior once you hit 120 uh, and then you swap to that class, then you can choose either the white tiger, the blue ox or the blazing motorcycle. And then we have the two other mounts that we can get from the rush shop. So we've got hot wheels. Uh, boost power attack speed by 2% per second up to 40%. I would say this is probably not an amazing mount. You probably don't want to get this mount unless you've unlocked everything else already. Powers, yeah, they do decent damage, but most of the damage is still going to come from yourself. So it's more important to kind of buff your own character's stats as much as you can rather than prioritizing your PAL stats, as they're still in the end just side characters, just supporting you. So you don't, you can't really make them main characters in a way. So I would say this is kind of a bit lower than all the other mounts. 
And the other mount that we have in the rush shop is Cloud Drifter, where it, it costs, I think, 20. 20 of these. What, what do you call them? I don't even know. Sky Rider passes to unlock it. I'd say aesthetically this looks the best because it's got all these particles, these stars kind of shooting from it and it looks really nice. So this mount is more geared towards mages as mages want as much skill crit rate as possible so they can crit on their skills and do more damage. So if you're a mage then definitely try to go for Cloud Drifter. If you're not a mage, you should probably focus on the other mounts that we've mentioned before. So if you're a warrior, like I said again, tiger, ox, or motorcycle. If you're archer, yeah, you could probably just go for pyre breaker. That's probably your best bet. And yeah, I think that covers it for mounts. Then we just got the three artifacts left. So the most recent one, spring cord. Every 11 seconds, deal 1000% of current basic attack, AoE damage, and confuse targets. Each of their own attacks, basic attacks, combos, counter strikes, and skills will do an extra 20% of their current basic attack damage to themselves. The confusion lasts 5 seconds, and it casts the first time immediately after the battle starts. This is huge. This is amazing. This is probably the best PvP artifact in the game right now maybe there will be a better one in the future we never know but if you plan on going warrior at 120 again this is amazing also this artifact is sort of like a p2w killer so the stronger your opponent is the more damage they will end up doing to themselves so then you have a better chance in beating people who are stronger than you or if you are both equal in damage, in health, in defense, but then you have this spring cord artifact, but they don't, you're gonna win. So PvP, absolutely amazing. In PvE, it's not as good. It's still okay, it's still pretty good. It's good when you're versing the PvE bosses, but when you're just playing the main stages with lots of uh, little enemies, then it doesn't do that much. Then we have Candy Gatling. Honestly, this is this is a crazy artifact. This is actually really strong, especially for archers. It goes crazy. Basic attacks, combos, and counters unleash an additional one to five bullets. Each bullet deals 10% of current basic attack damage. So if someone has this, you'll, you'll see. It literally just looks like a machine gun because they're just going absolutely crazy. I think this is probably the most rounded and solid artifact overall. This is equally strong in PvE and PvP. I think this is probably the best artifact for archers. For warriors, I think Spring Cord is probably the best. And then we have Thunder Wrath. Basic attacks and combos deal an additional 30% AoE damage. This is really good. In PvE probably one of the best uh, in clearing the mob stages because every basic attack you just end up clearing all the side monsters a bit faster so this is also really really good for archers in PvP it kind of does like basically nothing because we don't really need AoE damage in PvP we're just versing one person so it's better if you had something else like spring cord or candy gatling and I think for mages I would probably also choose spring cord and yeah I think that about covers it for this video let me know if I've missed something actually I have missed something I just wanted to say again here the artifact effects it says global attack global basic attack damage and then global attack again all these are permanent effects they can't be turned off so once you unlock it you always have this plus 10 percent global attack here again i can choose to use the skill of thunder wrath of the hammer but still have the skin of the spring cord harp on so i still have my harp on here fighting 
but my Thunder Rough skill is on. And I can do the same here with the blue Frostbite Spear. I can equip this and I have a spear on now, but the effect that I'm using is still the hammer's effect, Thunder Wrath. So a neat trick for people who don't know yet, might have just missed out on it. I think it should definitely help you. And yeah, I think that about covers it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a like, comment if you have any questions, and I'll catch you in the next video.